we can now easily run away from our enemies, but well, we can't fight back and without that our game would be just stupid, right? So how do we make attack in our game, but also how to respond to this attack? Like, for example, let's make an enemy die. That's a good question, right? So in order to do it, firstly, we will go into the player scene, into animated sprite 2D, and we're going to put here a new animation and we're going to call it attack. Now I'm going to increase the FPS to 10. OK, and afterwards, it's very important to uncheck animation looping. Why? Because we want to attack only once when somebody hits. We do not want to loop this animation like forever when somebody click on our keyboard, for example, space or whatever. Afterwards, we need to add the frames from the sprite sheet. So let's go into assets and let's choose our warrior. And now we need to choose an attack. Let's say that we're going to choose this attack. OK, there are many other types. For now, let's only use this. And now notice that when we play it, our player is attacking, right? But uh, there is a small problem in it. Uh, what kind of problem? Well, the first thing is that we need to know when should we detect an attack. Notice that we have a sword here. But when we go to the uh, animated sprite 2D, and here we have got something like animation, we can move frame by frame. And as you can see, to be honest, the moment that the attack should like be detected, it's like only on this particular frame, right? So we need to somehow detect this area only when the frame number three happens and how to do such things. We will use something what is called area 2D because this is just a region that detects a, a space where we define it. And inside of it, I am going to put the collision shape 2D and I'm going to use rectangle and put it like, you know, something like that. Let's change the color to, for example, red. So we know that it is like attack area. Let's change the name also, right? And this is the place where we want to like detect our enemies only in this place, but also only in this frame. And the problem is how do we detect only this frame, right? Firstly, let's think for a second. Uh, how do we monitor detection when it happens? It happens when this is set on on or off. OK, the thing that many people do also is here is collision shape and they can like disable or enable the collision. This is also the way. But instead of it, we can also just make it um, being able to monitor or not. Right. So by default, we are not monitoring anything. And it means that the area 2D is not sending any of these signals. But when we change the monitoring to true from code on frame three, then these signals can emit, you know, that, hey, the event happened, right? And now we can run the project and anything happens. No, of course not, because we have just, you know, player with animation that has not been invoked by anything. So now we go to the project, project settings, go to the input map and let's build a new action that we're going to call, for example, attack. Let's add it. Let's go to the attack and let's put here, for example, space. So space is going to invoke hit. You can put it also on Xbox, like I saw, uh, showed in the previous lectures. That's up to you. But let's say that space is going to invoke this animation. And now when we go to the player, we need to code it. In this course for coding, we use AI, right, for helping. So when we go to the cloud that we talked in the previous lectures, we have context from previous lecture. Remember, again, you need to put information regarding your game. Otherwise, it will not help you properly, right? AI will not know what to do. So now it has got all our script. It knows what's going on, but it doesn't know about the things that I've just done, right? So it doesn't know about this attack area, for example. So what we do, we make a screenshot like this and then we also go to the animated sprite 2D, right? Uh, let's copy this here. And I added attack area. This is the area that should detect when monitored um, enemy scene. And when it happens that enemy scene body enters area 2D, I want enemy to die so disappear so this is the first thing that must happen right so i gave it instruction when this is monitored but when it should be monitored it 
AI doesn't know. So now I'm going to what? Make another screenshot like this. And now when I put it here, I will add. I also want detection to happen only in frame number three from attack animation. Okay? And I think that's enough for now at least. So I gave it the context using images because it's easier, right? I use the share X program for that. Uh, so it's pretty fast to do such things. And now I'm just gonna copy the content of the player. So I will go here, go to the player, go to the script and now copy and paste it here, right? And now it's not enough. Remember, always read. Uh, it showed us how we did it, but uh, well, we don't need to understand it at least for now. Uh, before we check if it works or not. <laughs> so to make back to make this work, you need to do the following. It's also very important. So it said that we need to attach input. We did it before. Now we need to go into NMS scene, and this is very important and something new. Because notice that in order to detect all enemies and to be able to like refer to them from any place, you can create something what is called groups. And this is a new thing in this tutorial. When I choose enemy character body to the node. When you go to the node, here you have got signals, but also groups. And this thing allows you to define groups. So things that you can access anywhere in your program. And it says that you should call it enemies. Okay. So plus enemies. Okay. So I have now group that is called enemies. And as you can see now you have got here what? Something like this that you can click and see, okay, this is in group and it's called enemies. Right? So now any enemy that we respawn using our enemy spawner from the last lecture is going to be in this group, okay, always. And you can now like ask for that place. And now it says you need to connect body enter signal, right? From the attack area to the attack area body enter. Okay, that's, let's do it. So when we go to the, uh, from what? <laughs> connect body enter uh, signal from attack area. So when we go to attack area, which is in the player attack area. And now when we go to the uh, node and signals, here is body entered. And now we need to pick the on attack area body entered, right? Like this and connect. Now, as you can see, we have got here green thing that says, okay, this is going to happen here, right? Now, when we play it, let's see what happens. Oh, I think it destroyed a bit our code from the previous lectures. And that's bad. And it happened because it didn't connect what we did before. It only, uh, it tried to, you know, do its own script. So let's, let's, let's fix it. Uh, do not, uh, can, maybe, can you like connect? Can you connect the script we had before, player GD, with the script you did? Um, so I can just copy paste. Well, it, you know, when there is much code, like this situation, sometimes, unfortunately, uh, well, it will only focus, AI will only focus on creating like the solution for the problem that you've just asked, right? And uh, it's good idea to well, do it like this. <laughs> so now as you can see, it didn't destroy anything. And now when I hit space, well, it doesn't work. It's because AI tried to solve the problem, but didn't take into consideration that when one animation is changing from another, that you need to, uh, you know, work around this. And normally you would need to also do it manually and think how to do such a thing. But hey, I can now, you know, solve problems step by step. So uh, the animation right now is not finishing. It starts because uh, the next animation like idle or walk is in the way. Can you fix it? So I can uh, always finish animation attack when attack happens. So remember that you might be thinking, okay, that I can't, you know, fix everything and think about everything. <laughs> Well, that's true, but it's also like happening to me when I'm writing code. <laughs> it's not, I can, you know, predict everything and it's always a good idea to debug things, you know, 
uh, one by one. As you can see, it works fine. Just a few more, you know, steps. Let's make visible collisions to see how it works. So as you can see, uh, now when we play our game, this red thing detects what our our goblins, right? Right now I died, but it's because the goblin spawned, uh, the next goblin spawned totally next to me. And there is one more problem. Notice that when I'm changing direction, what? The area 2D doesn't change the direction. So let, well, let's change it, right? Uh, when I flip a player, uh, area 2D doesn't. Can you change it? So uh, you might be now, oh, there is so much code done that I don't understand now what's going on here, for example, right? But remember, as I said, now I can just do something like that. Control A, Control C. Meanwhile, when it's do being done, put it like here and do something like that. Can you explain me a both code step by uh, line by line as if I was 10 years old beginner in Godot? Right? And let's go! Meanwhile, I can go here, copy the new code, put it here, right? And now, as you can see, hey, it works fine properly, right? When I flip, it also flips. Let's see if it kills also. So, oh, I didn't hit the proper button, sorry. Uh, so, space, uh, space. And now our game is getting better, right? Because we can fight back finally. <laughs> not, not like, you know, before. Right? So that's, that's pretty cool. We can fight back. It doesn't have sound yet, but we can also, of course, improve it. The enemies are just now disappearing. They don't have animation of dying. All the things can be changed. Easy, right? And now when I do it, uh, go to the chat GPT, for example, notice the explanations here. So this line means our code is for character that moves around in a 2D game. Okay. This is how fast. Okay. Okay. This is, uh, these are things from the previous lectures. So maybe let's go here. It makes the character play play the idle animation. It run, turns off the attack area stat. And this is very important. So it did what I said before. Notice that we have here monitoring, right? And we I disabled it manually, right? But well, AI didn't know that and it made sure, AI she made sure that monitoring is gonna be set to false when the game uh, loads the attack uh, attack area. And well, I think this is a good, good idea to have it here just in case that somebody unclicks this here, for example, and forgets. So <laughs> this is a good idea to put it here. And now, uh, if the character is not on the floor, it makes the character to fall down using gravity, right? And now, if you press the jump button, usually the space bar, and the character is on the floor, it makes the character to jump. So to, to be honest, this is the leftover from the script uh, from the beginning of our game. Uh, we don't have floor right now, so to be honest, we could just you know remove this part so it doesn't take you know, it doesn't, AI doesn't need to create as much code as it does now. We don't use it, right? Um, we don't have gravity right now. So to be honest, we could just delete this part and this part because this is just left over of the previous from the previous lectures. But as you can see, we can learn with AI, right? It's not like uh, this is finished. So now we can see that physics process is run all the time. And if the character is not on the floor, okay, this is uh, sorry, sorry, we, we read about it already. Now. Uh, direction checks which direction you are pressing, right, left, up, or down. So this is the thing that takes into consideration if you are clicking right, left, down, or move up uh, key. And it doesn't matter, also remember, what kind of key you are using. I mean, if it's from Xbox, if it is from the keyboard, right? Because we set the move left here, how it should be represented. And then the direction is checked, uh, checked which direction you are pressing. Uh, pre uh, pressing and if you are pressing a direction it moves the character in that direction right if the character is not attacking place the walking animation so this is the part that was very important and not, we didn't have it before right that's why uh, our player uh, when i tried to attack uh, he was still moving right but now if attacking if is attacking is set to true then other animation has like the main priority right this is uh, this walk animation is gonna be played only when is attacking is not playing that's cool right and it flips the character spread if moving left to or right right so it does all this stuff you can just read it and you can get the idea on how to do it it could be me that would uh, that, that would explain you to it to you that all those things but to <laughs> be honest how, uh, what, 
who cares who explains it to you when it exp the most important thing is that this explanation must be good enough for you. And the coolest part about AI is that even if I don't still understand this part, right? I can just copy this and to could you explain it on another example? Why don't understand this part? I don't understand signals. Can you explain them using 10 different words? Uh, the That's powerful, right? But still, you need to use tutorials, especially for, you know, working with editors like where to click okay so groups are here right okay uh, and to get like know-how to get the process of doing all these stuff later really every almost everything can be generated by ai and some people might be against it but to be honest somehow visual scripting where you just say what to be done next is really very similar isn't it uh, you you wouldn't do like in visual scripting something like that uh, that you would get the input uh, get action strange and all that things into one variable you just have direction that you will refer to and you will just play with it right okay so if this guy is going left i'm gonna use this animation that's all i wouldn't need to write a code i would just you know connect some blocks to each other and it would just happen so don't worry use ai but also in the same time try to you know look at the solution and later learn what happens in each line of code to learn new things uh, so when something can't be fixed by ai or you have some idea uh, that is you know very big you can make some kind of structure on your own right and uh, remember ai is solving always like one simple thing that you ask it for so for example now as you can see we free the body that entered the attack area here right but should we kill enemies from the attack area no we should probably make a function here and uh, you know put this here because maybe i would like to also not only you know dispose of the body of enemy but also i would like to make an animation make some kind of sound and i would also like to um maybe maybe some enemies would have more hp so if i had to put everything here in one place this would be a bad idea but ai right now doesn't know that you want to do all this stuff so it put it just here because this is just a simple fast solution to this problem right and to be honest uh, this is enough if we had finished for example playing our game and this would be the end right we solve the problem why uh, like over complicate some things but some games are gonna be bigger and because they gonna get bigger uh, you need to sometimes plan ahead you can then plan ahead with ai but without writing instantly this code but you know you can make some kind of objectives make some kind of document for your entire game then analyze with with ai so she can help you right or you can because you learn from mistakes when making a small game uh, make some things on your own also right because remember the worst thing in programming is the paralysis from being like wow i need to make everything perfectly in the first instance it's never gonna happen and to be honest i have 20 years of experience i still make mistakes right and they, they are sometimes so funny that, that i'm like really i i was doing it for so, such a long time and i keep doing these things well i have a dhd so i make things, mistakes even if i know something perfectly always but 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 that, that's me right <laughs> that, that's gonna happen to me always maybe this is also a cause but we make mistakes and we learn from them uh, better than you know doing something like that you need to have everything perfectly done from scratch it's just impossible to do it on the first go just do your first like you know, 10 mini games and learn from each mistake so next time the structure of your folders the structure of your nodes the functions that you use uh, everything is gonna be each time a bit better because you will notice oh my god this thing uh, was uh, this thing is just making me uh, having to rewrite everything from scratch right the thing that i did here i need to now repeat myself so many times maybe i could do it differently but now i i just need, i need to re rewrite my entire code so in the next game you can think about these mistakes and also you can in advance do some things on your own or you can in advance say ai to avoid for example doing such things right you can write it down all your mistakes write them down and 
just learn from them. That's the best way. Have a good day. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask.